Thanks for taking the time to watch my presentation on our upcoming Pi Day activity. We'll talk more about it on Wednesday during our delayed start. As you may know, March 14th, 2015 is considered the Pi Day of the century. 3.1415 are the first five digits of Pi, and this day only occurs once in a lifetime. What better way to celebrate all things Pi than using the half day before break for linking activities? The kids are antsy to start break, especially after all this snow, and we typically are missing a few because parents start their vacation a day early. I've got sessions planned for the day, and it will be a fun way to get the boys moving around. Here's how I see the day unfolding. The pancake breakfast is running from 7.30 to 8.30, and the 8th graders eat and clean up afterward. Concert choir may be running from 8 to 9, so let's meet in the auditorium at 9.10. I'll have a very short introduction, and our musical composition will kick off the festivities. We'll have a March Madness-style pie-off to see which student can recite the most numbers in pie. We did this two years ago, and the boys loved it. And we'll have prizes going to students in each grade. Our rotating sessions will run from 9.50 to 11.50. Students will rotate with their linking buddies, and I'll have schedules for everyone. For those who may be interested in a pie-related lesson for the 8.30 to 9.10 time frame, I have some ideas. One session will be in the Learning Commons. Students in that group will find their birthday in pie, while others will create pie coups, I have some examples, and make paper plate chains, and I'll explain what that looks like on Wednesday. Another session theme is art. Thanks to Helmy and Elaine's input, I know I have to split this group to accommodate the size of the art room. Half will go to the art room and paint something like the Kandinsky circles or draw their favorite pie, while the other half will go to the geo room to create iPad circle art or do glue stick paint dabber art. We're going to use some of the student created artwork for bulletin boards. We have a third session. Remember, these aren't in order. Every group will have a different session at a different time. We'll have snack in the dining hall, English muffin pizzas. Chef Kevin said he'd set up the muffin sauce and cheese for the ninth grade and fourth grade group to assemble. While the food is cooking, the students can determine the frequency and create a bar graph showcasing which number in pi shows up the most for the first 100 digits. They can make predictions and use sticky circles to plot their tallies. The last two sessions are on the left and right sides of the gym. One side can find their own value of pi by using string to measure the circumference of a hula hoop and then find its diameter. Divide the two and the result should be pretty close to 3.14. And if there's time, they can have a hula hoop contest. The other side will make paper chains following a number color code. For example, one is green, two is pink, three is gray, etc. There's actually a national contest for length, and Monroe's Massac High broke the record in 2011 with 75,000 chains. I'm not expecting to break any records, but it should be fun. Another potential activity is to create a necklace using the same no number color combo with 31 beads. We also could have students use their bodies to create the pie symbol, like the pie chain photo on this page, and someone could take pictures from the balcony. What I need from you is feedback. Are some of these activities over the heads of the little ones? Will there be enough time for the activities? Too much time. I'm open to suggestions and any feedback you have. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing your input on Wednesday.